Hello everybody, we are here at the Kennedy Space Center at the Visitor Complex. There's the launch countdown clock, the historical one. And we're coming in here to the entrance to show you the whole place. All right, all aboard. The buses that'll take us around and show us some of the launch complexes and take us over to the Saturn V Center. All right. Yes, I'm talking about reusable rockets. SpaceX expertly lands many of their rocket boosters after launch. Sometimes they land back here at Cape Canaveral, while others may land on an autonomous drone ship floating in the ocean. The ability to recover and reuse rocket boosters is one of the most exciting developments in the aerospace industry in recent years. This advance in rocket technology is helping to bring down the cost of launching payloads into space, allowing more and more exciting technology to be deployed for use. Here we go. Ta -da. Now, uh, if you look on the very top of the launch pad, you'll see there's a white pole up there on the very top. Here's the recreation of the firing room with real consoles down there simulating the Apollo 8 launch. TV camera up there. For the comfort, Windows. Just like the real firing room. everybody the mighty Saturn V most powerful rocket ever made here at the Kennedy Space Center Saturn V Center the first stage here is a test article and then the second and third stage are flight articles and then we also have a fully flight capable Command module and service module. Let's check this thing out. All shiny and pretty. Flight hardware. They just moved this thing over here. They used to have it over near where the tip of the rocket is. But they moved this to make room for the lunar lander exhibit, they had a flight ready lunar lander that they had up in the ceiling above the eating area of the cafeteria. And they're properly displaying it now because it's flight ready hardware. Here's the back service module, the big SPS engineer. Big nozzle, because it's op designed to operate in the vacuum of space optimally. Quad pack thrusters. Wow, you can get really close to this thing now, the way it's mounted. Mighty F1 engines. 1.5 million pounds of thrust each. Thank you. 
Look at these things. This thing never gets old, to me at least. What do you guys think? All right, let's walk on down past stage one and look at the interstage. You know, all this stuff was actually sitting out in the elements for about 20 years outside the vehicle assembly building before they finally built the Saturn V Center and put it in here and did a nice restoration. Thank goodness. Same thing happened to the Saturn V they have at the Space Center in Houston. It was sitting outside for decades, bird nests and everything, and then they finally put it inside and did a restoration. Here's the interstage. So again, like I mentioned, this is a flight ready second stage. <coughs> flight capable. Got the J2 engines here for the second stage, five J2 engines. Two hundred thousand pounds of thrust per engine here, times five. So a million pounds of thrust in the second stage compared to seven and a half in the first. coming up on the third stage again this is also a flight capable third stage with a single j2 engine same j2 engine same type just one of them so 200,000 pounds of thrust on the third stage get you all the way to the moon there's the top of your second stage look at that thing Moving on to the top here. And then up here you've got the area where the lunar module would be, that storage area there. And then we get the fake command and service module. And of course, the real command service module is up at the other end. And then here is the top of the original launch tower with the crane and everything and the top of the elevator where the astronauts went up. Here is a flight capable lunar lander. They're making a new exhibit. This thing used to be hanging from the ceiling right above the uh, food, the Moon Rock Cafe seating area. Probably had ketchup and mustard splashed on the bottom. They're finally making a nice exhibit where you can see it up close, but it's not open yet. So I'm peeking, peeking through the barrier here. Hope I don't get caught. This would have been used on Apollo 15, but when they canceled three of the missions, they decided not to use this lunar lander because this lunar lander could not do a three day J mission. This could do a mission similar to Apollo 14, about a day and a half. So they decided to retire this and use the J mission capable 
for the last three landings where they stayed on the surface three days and had the lunar rover but still flight ready hardware is always so cool to see and there it is we'll take one more look from the other side here in a minute and here's another view of the lander there's the door where they came out and you can see the windows where they stood with their faces close to the window so they could see out. That's the hatch they came out with to go down to the lunar surface and there's the ladder to take you down all the way to the lunar surface. Awesome. See the different antennas on top, quad thrusters, really similar to the ones on the service module. And here's the famous Astro van took all the uh, Apollo astronauts out to the pad. Much smaller than the one used for the shuttle because you don't need as much room. Only three guys. Now here's another solemn area. They've got a really nice area dedicated to Apollo 1. And the three astronauts that died in the fire on the pad. Including the very hatch that they couldn't get open to save those guys in time. They've got the very hatch here, right where it all took place. It's pretty surreal. Let's take a look. Here's where the hatches are. So they do an interesting lighting effect where they project and then they'll change the lighting and then the hatch will be right there behind the glass. The hatch. So there's the hatch and then here is the hatch cover. even see the burn marks on the hatch cover. And this is a pretty cool effect right here, projecting on the mist. Let's go through it. And this is the actual launch gantry the astronauts took out to the Apollo spacecraft. This used to be out in the rocket garden out in the rain for decades. And they gave it a fresh coat of paint and moved it inside here a couple years ago. Okay, here is the Apollo 14 command module, commanded by Alan Shepard. See the charring there on the bottom of the edge of the heat shield. And inside, you can see the three couches and the instruments. Some of the thrusters. You 
here's a lunar rover test article. Gene Cern and spacesuit. I don't think it's the one he wore on the surface because <coughs> it looks pretty clean. And here's a lunar tool cart. This is what Alan Shepard used on Apollo 14. So Apollo 14 had this, and 15 through 17 had this. Riding in style. <laughs> Shepard was pulling a cart. And this TV system actually lasted for a few days after they left the moon. So the guys in Mission Control could keep steering this camera and looking around after the astronauts had left. A little satellite dish. And here we are outside of the Saturn V Center. There's the vehicle assembly building. The Atlas V and SpaceX and Delta IV pads. And 39A, which is also used by SpaceX. And 39B, which hopefully will be used by the SLS.